Do you want to get rid of your anxiety? Do you? Maybe part of you doesn't want to get rid of it. Maybe part of you is holding on for a certain reason. We really need to look at that if you really do want to get rid of your anxiety. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dr. Mani with Peace in the Storms Ministries. I'm a psychologist, work in nursing homes, trying to help people manage through terrible, terrible storms, and want to try to apply that knowledge to help other people. So, today we're looking at anxiety. Please subscribe, please hit the subscribe button, the little bell notification, hit the thumbs up to let me know you like it. I'd really appreciate this. Please comment, let me know uh, what you think about all this. Love to get a discussion going. So my topic is anxiety. I used to help my wife, my ex-wife. She used to be anxious, uh, especially when we were flying. We'd go on trips or some vacation or something, and we'd get on an airplane and she'd start freaking out. Not terribly so, but she was extremely, very, very anxious. I even have a panic attack or two. And she knew as a psychologist, she tried to listen to what I was telling her. I talked about deep breathing and changing her thoughts and trying to reassure herself. And she'd do it a little bit, but she'd always fight me on it. Uh, she kept staying anxious. Finally, I kind of analyzing the whole situation and talking with her about it more, and I realized she didn't want to stop being anxious. She liked being anxious. Of course, most of her didn't like being anxious. Who likes being scared? Who likes having their heart beat out of their chest and they can't control the shaking and can't breathe well and feel like they're going to just scream? Nobody likes that. But is there a part of you that's doing it for a reason? Is there a purpose behind it? We need to look at that. What my ex-wife was wanting was a sense of control. The reason she held on to her anxiety was to give her some control over a scary situation. If she were to let her guard down, let go of the anxiety, relax, take it easy, then she wouldn't be prepared just in case the worst did happen. Let's say the plane started crashing out of control and going down. Well, in her mind, she was going to be ready for it. And so she was better prepared. But what if she did what I said and she relaxed and she let her guard down? Then she wouldn't be prepared in case an attack happened, in case a fall happened. It doesn't always make sense, but this is how our brains work. Nothing's really that silly or rational about how she was thinking. It's really quite common. She was just able to articulate it a little bit more that way. And, uh, and we need to always get out the voices in our head. It's not unusual to think two different ways or multiple different ways about a situation. And these the ways we think can very much contradict each other. So, for example, okay, I'm trying to lose a little weight, but my wife gives me some chocolate pie. I, just, I love chocolate pie. At the same time, I'm trying to lose weight. So I hate that chocolate pie. I want it, but I don't want it. We feel that way about people a lot of the times, don't we? So you can have different contradictory feelings, and that's okay. A lot of our bad habits, all of our bad habits, are that way. A lot of our feelings about a lot of things in life. It doesn't make you crazy to have one voice in your head say this and another voice in your head say that. A little devil on your shoulder over here, an angel over on your shoulder over here. That's how we think. The best, a lot of problems in our life come because we have a little voice in our head that's influencing us, but we don't own it. We don't deal with it directly. So what we have to do is become more self-aware of all the thoughts in our head, no matter how silly or irrational they are. If we have them, we need to get them out. We need at least need to consider what's in our head. And consider that you might have thoughts that aren't that smart. You're normal. You're human. It's okay. The best way to control them instead of them controlling you is to get them out on the table and deal with it. Once she was able to articulate that, yeah, this is why I'm holding on to the fear because of that we, in case we do fall, she was able to let go of it more. She knew the statistics, she knew the rationality that plane flying is much more danger, so much more safe than driving to the airport. You're much more likely to die on the way there to the airport than you are in a plane. But once she, but she didn't know why she was so afraid. But once she articulated it and identified it, it on the table she could deal with it more rationally. That's the way so much of our mind works, is we have to become more self-aware. And that means Letting down your pride a little bit and admitting what thoughts might be in your head. Good and bad and scary and dangerous. So why are you holding on to your anxieties? What is your fears and are they rational? Are you holding on to them 
just to be safe in case it really happens. A big part of this is figuring out what is the likelihood of your fear happening. If you're driving through a bad part of town and your car breaks down and you're having some anxiety that you might get mugged, well, that's a good chance you might. So you need to be a little bit afraid and your fear is there for a purpose to help protect you. But if you're afraid of someone not liking you and so you're staying up all night worrying about that, but when you really think about it, you really don't care if that person likes you or not anyway. You're still who you are. Your job's still safe. There's people around you who matter are still there. You're okay. And so you can, once you get on that table, you realize, hey, wait, I don't have to be afraid of that because it's less likely to happen. Some people's fears are very irrational and they know that, but they're not dealing with it directly. So let's say some fears, when you really look at it and analyze it, still are obviously still could happen. Let's say you're afraid your husband's gonna cheat on you and he could leave you. Well, you have to look at it logically, realistically, analytically. Is there a good reason? Or are you just worried just for no reason? You have to look at the logic of it. But let's say you do have reason to believe he's, he's been acting suspicious. He's been staying out late at night. He's, he's putting on more cologne. You know, he's doing all the signs that a cheating husband can show. Well, maybe you have good reason to, to look for it. But then you put in an action plan. And I know there's more I can talk about with anxieties and how to deal with real fears that I'll get to in another video. But for now, let's just say you put that into action. And so you take it, you always breathe. I'm always pushing on uh, breathing. Look at some of my past videos. Take deep, slow breaths, relax, get out the pen and paper, write down an action plan. Write down what you need to do about the fear, no matter what the fear is. Even if you already know it's rational, you, you've looked at it, you've said, okay, I wanna keep control because it protects me and just in case, but it's less likely to happen, but I still can't let go of it. Write it down, write it out, take deep breaths, relax your muscles. Remember what I said last video, the more you breathe and relax, the more you slow down your stress response, the more blood flow you get to the front part of your brain, the more you can think through it more rationally. So do all these steps, but look at yourself first and face the fact that maybe you want to stay in control for a certain reason, but do you need to stay in control? Just put it on the table, deal with it more directly and overtly, and you can deal with it better. I believe in you. Here's how I'm hoping you have peace in the storm. I hope this brings you peace. Uh, please subscribe, like, hope you've watched it all the video. Thank you very much. Check out some of other videos, especially on the same series of anxiety. Bye-bye. But then you also need to, well, I, talking about airplanes, I can't keep flying, airplanes from flying overhead. Hold on to the anxiety as a sense of control. We don't deal with it directly. We're not dealing with it directly.